For question number 18, the correct option is A. And to show the steps of solution, as I already have said, let us investigate the two motions P and S because we can see there the position vector R is a simpler, relatively simple functions of T and therefore you can differentiate this expression easier than the other two expressions. So, in step number one, considering the motion P, what was that position vector R is given as alpha T into I plus beta T into J cap, where alpha and beta are positive constants, T is time and i and j are unit vectors along plus x and plus y directions. So keeping in mind the question, let's differentiate this. The velocity vector v is coming out to be derivative of r with respect to time, dr dt. So you differentiate is giving me alpha into i cap plus beta into j cap. Therefore, Linear momentum of the particle, symbol is P, is given by mass of particle m into velocity vector v, is giving me m into alpha into i cap plus m into beta into j cap. And you can see here, since mass m is a constant, alpha and beta are constants, i and j unit vectors also constants, linear momentum of the particle is constant or conserved in time. So that's my first finding. P remains a constant for motion P. Next, kinetic energy for the particle. Kinetic energy is K is given by half mv square where m is the mass, v is the linear speed. Now if v vector is given to be alpha i plus beta j, obviously we can write that this is half into m. The linear speed is square root of alpha square plus beta square. This is the linear speed when the velocity vector is this. Squaring that is coming out to be half into m into alpha square plus beta square and that again is a constant or conserved quantity for this particular motion. Next, angular momentum. Symbol is capital L and it is given by the formula R cross P, isn't it? Where R is the position vector and P is the linear momentum vector. Since P is equal to mv, we can write this as m into, m is a scalar quantity inside brackets cross product r cross v is giving me m into, let us use square brackets here, r is alpha t into i cap plus beta t into j cap, kept inside round brackets, cross velocity vector found here. This is alpha i cap plus beta j cap, isn't it? In my next step, I can write down angular momentum vector L. Well, m is a constant kept outside Entering in square brackets, you can see that i cross i is a null vector. j cross j is a null vector. So you can only have this into this. That is giving me alpha into beta into t into i cross j is k cap, isn't it? And then this into this. But j cross i is minus k. So eventually it's coming out to be minus alpha into beta into t 
into K. As you can see, this cancelling out and you're getting L to be a null vector, isn't it? Now, if angular momentum vector is a null vector, it means that it remains conserved over the motion. So L also is a constant. We are dealing here with the motion P, the first one. Let me use an alternative method to establish that for this motion, angular momentum L remains a constant. Well, let me remind you here, this is a method I'm showing for the benefit of learning, but when you solve the question, there is no issue of trying different methods. You go for the best and quickest one to save valuable time. So in this approach, we recall that the torque of the force acting on the particle is equal to the rate of change in angular momentum with time. In symbol, that is tau is equal to dl dt. Now, in this case, for this motion, v is a constant. Therefore, acceleration vector a, that is dv dt, this must be null vector, isn't it? If v is constant in time, as is here, derivative becomes a null vector. It follows, therefore, that the force vector acting on the particle, that is m into a, that's also a null vector. And then the torque of the force about the origin given by r cross f, that's also a null vector. But this torque tau is nothing but dl dt. So if rate of change in angular momentum with time, that's the null vector, it follows, therefore, that angular momentum itself, L, remains constant in time over the path. In statement number two, we shall check for the conservancy of total mechanical energy and potential energy. Now, for a system on which only conservative force acts, we can say that total mechanical energy of the system, E, that is a sum of potential energy and kinetic energy, must remain constant. And since for this motion P, you already established kinetic energy K is a constant, it follows therefore that potential energy U is also constant or conserved. So getting here for the motion P from list one, this matches with all the five elements of list two. Check for yourself. One, two, three, four, five. All of them remain constant. But then this particular matching is there in both options A and B of the question. Let me show you the dilemma. For both options A and B, this matching is shown. So we are not yet over. We have to now consider the motion S and check for that motion whether angular momentum remains conserved or not. Wait for a moment. So in step number three, pick up the motion S from list one. And that motion has got its position vector R is equal to alpha T I cap plus beta by two T square into J cap. From this, if we differentiate velocity vector V is coming out to be dr dt. Similar approach here as your differential is coming out to be alpha i plus beta t j, isn't it? And therefore, you can already see here that V is a function of time unlike the previous case. So angular momentum of the particle L that is given by R cross P, which is same as scalar quantity M into the cross product R cross V. So it's M into, in square brackets, I can write alpha T I plus beta by two T square into J kept in round brackets, cross V vector is alpha I 
plus beta t into j. This is giving me, as you can see inside the square brackets, i cross i is a null vector, j cross j is a null vector and therefore is coming out to be m into, just verify my steps, this into this, that is alpha beta into t square into k cap and then this into this, remember j cross i is minus k, so it's coming out to be minus alpha beta t square by 2 into k cap. It's eventually giving me half m alpha beta t square into k cap. This is a function of time and not a constant. So let me write it boldly here that for the motion S, angular momentum vector L is not a constant, while since only conservative force is active, you can say safely that for this motion, total energy E will be a constant. Once again, we can establish here for the motion S, angular momentum vector is not constant in time, but since only conservative force is acting, total energy of the particle is a constant. And therefore, we can conclude that, let me write somewhere here, that for the motion S from least one, this one is matching with only the element five from least two, and that therefore, we conclude that out of the options A and B, we must choose this option A. That is the correct option for us. As I end this question, let me add one point in hindsight. As you can see, only option A is telling that for motion S, total energy is conserved, while angular momentum vector is not conserved. But the options B, C, and D, each of them is telling that for motion S, angular momentum is also constant, which is clearly false. Therefore, if you have started with motion S, not even motion P, you could arrive at the correct option A much quicker than me. Think this way.